D is one of the strangest and most ambitious games I have ever played. However, I must stress that even though it is one of the most memorable and ambitious games I ever played, it is not one of the best games I have ever played. D is not one of the best horror games I have ever played. D is not one of the best narrative games I have ever played, but it's an experience that I cannot stop thinking about. You can't say you hate D unless you also love D. And I am saying, I hate D. This is a confusing one. D is a narrative or interactive movie horror game released for the 3DO in 1995, imported to the PS1, Sega Saturn, DOS, sometimes later. I played the version available on Steam and GOG, which I actually wouldn't recommend, but I'll get to that later. And I'm not understanding it by calling it just narrative horror. There isn't really any gameplay here. There are puzzles, but really, you just press buttons to play a new video. D is a horror game where you can't die. Well, kind of, but I'll get to that. D was made at the height of the full motion video craze. Now, before this, most FMV games were glorified episodes of TV where you occasionally pressed a button to continue instead of seeing a deaf animation. But D is different. D is fully CG animated, which may not seem like much, but you have to remember this came out five months before Toy Story, the first fully CG animated film. I know D doesn't look nearly as good as Toy Story, but it was made by a much smaller team, and the CG still looks okay. The unorthodox way the game is played and presented is both D's greatest strength and its greatest weakness. Let's start with the good. Being fully FMV helps D have a better presented story than most of its contemporaries. However, the gameplay suffers because of it. D's gameplay is in a word, clunky. And the game being clunky breaks your immersion and in turn hurts the story, especially the pacing. You play D with only really three actions. Move forward or turn, interact, or use an item. However, each of these has some problems. Movement in D is limited for obvious reasons, but sometimes it can be more limiting than it needs to be. For example, take the, this room early in the game. I open the door and see a drawer. I push forward and go to it. I do what I need to do and then turn around. Laura, the main character, completely turns around, back to the door, ignoring the other half of the room. This tells me that I can't go to the other part of the room, so I leave. Keep this in mind. She turns towards that side of the room and keeps going. Eventually, I get stuck. I can't progress without the information and items I don't have. Roughly 10 minutes later, I come back and realize that you can go to the other side of that room, but only from the door and not from the drawer. But I'm stuck again. So 15 minutes after that, I break down and check a guide because I had been playing for more than half an hour and basically nothing had happened. And I find out I had put the paper in a bowl of water I didn't even know was interactable, let alone interactable with the paper. Again, I had been playing for over half an hour and had opened one room which wasn't even useful to me yet. Did I mention that if you play the game for more than two hours, you automatically get a game over? Now, I will admit, the game got less confusing after that section, except for something else I'll get to later. But the story takes a hit if I'm just wandering aimlessly for half an hour. Again, there's a two-hour time limit, so that's a quarter of the game. Let's talk about that story. So it's a little bit unclear, but here's my understanding of it. Spoilers, by the way, but honestly, me explaining the story is probably just as good an experience as you actually playing the game. So you play as Laura the daughter of a man who recently became a homicidal maniac and locked himself in a hospital. So you, as Laura, go and try to get him out. But spooky shit happens and your dad's spirit tells you to leave before he is taken over. Anyways, you work your way through this increasingly supernatural hospital. It's supposed to be a hospital, but it doesn't look like anyone I've ever been to. According to Wikipedia, she gets transported to a castle at the beginning of the game. That's not what I interpreted it as. Anyways, you reach the top of the hospital castle and your dad reveals that your family has the blood of Dracula and he is turning into Dracula and you are also Dracula and you killed and ate your mom to become Dracula but he erased your memory so then he eats you to become Dracula for real unless you shoot him to get the good ending but I didn't. <sighs> okay, two thoughts about the ending specifically. Firstly, every other item in the game has been one use so how did you expect me to know I could still use the gun? Secondly, what was that ending? All this Dracula stuff comes out of nowhere. I had no idea that that's where it was going. There aren't any vampires in the game, it's just a spooky hospital castle. The story of D should be better. 
It feels like it was handed to them on, the, on a silver platter. Why was this chosen to be the story? Maybe I'm spoiled by better horror game stories, but this just feels empty. Like there should be more here instead of just fucking around for two hours to get told you're Dracula or whatever. Speaking of fucking around for two hours, let's talk about that. Now, I talked about the opening section, but let's talk about the end of the game. This section, this fucking section is human dog shit. I spent around 40 minutes in this place, and again, it would have been way longer had I not used a guide. Basically, you turn this switch thing to turn the room and access other rooms. This makes it the biggest area in the game, which for a game like this is already kind of a problem. But you may be thinking, oh, but this area is split into smaller sections to make it easier to navigate. But actually, this makes it frustrating to navigate in an entirely different, worse way. Let's say you go down to the pool section. You watch the cutscene for going down the stairs, inspect the pool, watch that cutscene, realize you can't do anything, watch the stairs cutscene again, but this time going up. Go and turn the wheel, turn around, and go to the next room, but then nothing. There's no room. The rotation is filled with more uninteractable walls than actual rooms for some reason. So you repeat that process again until you find another room, and then essentially do the same thing as the pool room again until you find a room you can actually do something in. Keep doing this until you complete the area. Oh, and the puzzle in the garden can go fuck itself. For some reason, the controls wouldn't work on top of the puzzle being just dumb in the first place. This entire section is a representation of everything wrong with D. So, would I recommend D? Actually, kind of? Yeah, I know, I just went on and on about this game tilting me, but I still stand by that D is one of the most unique games I've ever played. Even though I complain about the story and the gameplay, D has a great atmosphere, even with its limited graphics. There were some moments where I was legitimately spooked out. But back to the question of the hour, should you play D? Actually, before I answer that, let's talk about how you play D. Yeah, did you figure out how I said I was going to talk about the PC port? Okay, how would you re-release D? Well, I think how you would do it is port the original PC version to natively work on modern PCs, and then replace all the cutscenes with HD versions. Nope. How about you just take the PC version, put it in the Docsbox emulator, and change nothing. Not even the scan lines, which apparently can be disabled if you mess with the files. Now, some people complain that games like Sega Genesis Classics are just emulators you're being made to pay for. But at least these games look good. Not to mention they're a bit more subtle without being an emulator. D literally shows the DOS box, box logo when it boots. According to the D fan community, the best way to play D is with a PS1 emulator, and personally, I hate that. D deserves better. I can't really tell you if you should play D, but if you're looking for something new, something you've never experienced before, I'd quickly recommend D, albeit with a guide. Uh, this video took uh, way too long to make, longer than it uh, needed to take to make, but I think I'm happy with uh, how it's turning out. Um, if you wanted to see someone play D, you could have watched me uh, stream the entire game blind for the first time. Um, yeah, so I, I might stream a little bit more in the future, but that's only if people are interested in it. So tell me if you'd want to see me stream more, and I'll do it.